Hi, I'm Nan Simonson, and I want to welcome you to my PowerPoints. Uh, I have a group that I meet with, PowerPoint group, and it is with the um, the basic uh, premise that we have points of interest that relate to lifestyle as medicine. And we go over the lifestyle ideas and the group, there are, I don't know, 12, 13 of us here today. Uh, after I go over whatever it is, the subject is that day, we talk about it. So it's the PowerPoints group and I'll be getting back to them in a minute. But the, the subject today, is our thoughts can our can our mind be employed to um to change negative thoughts i don't think that's the way i said it negative thoughts and our our mind's power to change them or something but i wanted to look at this with even more specificity and because what i'm going to be talking about is grounded in cognitive behavioral therapy principles. And that is that you can change the mind with the mind. I was listening to a podcast of someone whom I admire and she was, she said it very simply, and that's what got my wheels turning. She said, when you're feeling a bad, when you feel badly about something, it's because of your thoughts. She wasn't talking about physical illness. It's because of the way you're thinking about it. It's because of your thoughts. Well, they're just thoughts. So with your mind, you change those thoughts, think something else, and it makes it better. Uh, she's 85. She has a podcast. I've spoken her about her before. Sandra Hart, I think her name is. She's 85 or 86, and she comes on once a week, and she just talks about things that are relevant as she sees them in her life to aging. And I thought to myself that, well, I know that we've been talking about that. We've been talking about self-limiting beliefs and and covering the, the law of attraction and things like that. But there's some specifics I'd like to bring up about this and ways that we can harness that understanding into mind changing and maybe even life changing changes in your life. First of all, and I'll give you eight um, pointers that can be implemented, that can make a difference. First, identify the negative thoughts. Um, become aware of those thoughts. Often, they happen automatically and go unchallenged. By paying attention to your thought patterns, you can start to identify the specific negative thoughts that you need to address. And sometimes it's easier for people to understand if there are examples. And one of the examples with this of this is something I've been bringing up with this group for a while. And that is my fear of technology and how I feel about it. And the immediate thought that comes to mind when I'm about to start something that's technological, something that's new, a new app I have to install, and then a new program I have to figure out. Well, Nan, you can't do this. And I can't do this. I can't do it because I have learning disabilities. And then if you think of it that way, I could then, because I did this the other day, say to myself, wait a minute, who says I can't? Look at the things that I have done and done just fine. Once I sat still, took a few breaths and dove into it rather than um, feeling so flustered because of the thoughts. Um, by paying attention to your thought patterns, you can start to identify the specific negative thoughts that need to be addressed. Two, challenge negative thoughts. Once you've identified a negative thought, challenge its validity. Ask yourself questions like, is this thought based on facts or assumptions? I'll go back to my last uh, statement. And what evidence do I have that this thought is true? This can help to view the situation more realistically. And I'll say it is true, but also possibly really truly limiting. It may not be. Three, replace with a positive thought. And this is what Sandra Hart was talking about. And that is think something different. 
After challenging the negative thoughts, try to replace them with a more positive, balanced thought pattern. This doesn't mean you should ignore reality, but rather look at it from a more positive and hopeful perspective. For example, instead of thinking, I'll never be good at this, <laughs> Ta -da. you might think, I may not be the best at this now, but I can improve with practice and effort. Haven't we done that in a, in a good part of our lives with all kinds of things? Number four, practice mindfulness. And you're going to hear what you've heard again and again when we've spoken of things that take evolution and change. And that is the word mindfulness. Practice mindfulness. Mindfulness can help you stay grounded in the present moment and reduce uh, uh, rumination uh, on past events or worries of the future. Techniques like meditation, deep breathing, being fully engaged in the present can shift your focus away from negative thoughts. So can visualization, where you accept the reality that in many cases, our mind can't tell, especially the subconscious mind, can't tell the difference in many cases, not all, between what is real and what is imagined. So if we visualize again and again and again, and I'm I'm doing these things that I'm talking about and I'm seeing results because I'm fighting my way out of years and years and years of discounting the possibilities for myself in this way. But visualize capability, visualize sitting quietly and in a determined manner. I'm now talking about the computer <laughs> like I did last night. I broke through yesterday evening with a program I'm uploading on my cal uh, uh, that I uploaded on my computer that I'm now using to schedule appointments. It's uh, okay. Harry is such a kid's word, but it is. It's Harry at first to take the time and the discipline to just sit through doing it. I did my entire calendar of opening spots and I hit a wrong button and it disappeared. Now, there was a time I'd get up and say, see, see, I knew it. I couldn't do that. And I just took a couple of deep breaths, <sighs> said, darn it, loudly, and went right back and put them in again. And, and this, it was really quite time consuming. Uh, but in any case, it was done. So again, I'll say um, there is value in staying mindful, staying present, staying calm, and looking at things in a way that makes them, first thing that comes to my mind is the word beguiling. That might be a little bit fanciful. <laughs> this is so beguiling. Uh, or just um, more interesting. Uh, look at it playfully. This is a game. I'm going to win it, by golly, <laughs> one way or another. And then visualize how that feels. Uh, my husband sat down to lunch today and I did the Rocky song, da, 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 because I feel really pleased that I got something done that I've thought about for weeks and didn't do for weeks. Okay. Five, develop a gratitude habit. Focusing on gratitude can shape, shift your mindset from negative to positive. Try to think of things you're grateful for daily. This can include big things like supportive relationships, small things like a sunny day. I also had heard somebody say recently that she wakes up every morning and said, and says loudly, this is a beautiful day from bed, sometimes in a dark room. <laughs> this is, or this is going to be, this is going to be a beautiful day. You can't put that kind of positivity into the universe, into our mind, into our subconscious without it having some positive effect. You do it repeatedly every day as if it's a mantra and you're setting yourself up for some pretty good stuff. Engage in positive activities. Doing things that you enjoy and that make you feel good can increase positive emotions and reduce negative thinking. This might include hobbies, exercise, socializing with friends, or anything else that brings you joy. And you can ask yourself, 
Um, what do I find that is joyful? What do I do that I really love to do? Write it down and see how often we can repeat that. Another exercise could be to write, and I heard this today in another support group from another teacher at another support group they were in. I feel happy when, write it out. I feel, um, oh, I laughed when. I felt relaxed and peaceful when. I mean, think of how far you could go with that exercise. I was at my best when. I felt most loved when. I loved myself most when. Um, I felt so satisfied when. Do you see what you can do with this? On and on and on. And then last, number eight, if, necess if necessary, seek professional help. If negative thoughts are overwhelming and hard to manage on your own, consider um, seeking help from a mental health professional. Therapies like cognitive behavioral therapy are specifically designed to help people change their thought patterns. I have a personal story about this. I had never used cognitive behavioral therapy until my husband was uh, diagnosed with terminal esophageal cancer. And this was my late husband. So that happened. And it was July of 20, uh, it was July of 2009. Uh, and he had his, all his therapies, et cetera. And the day after Thanksgiving, uh, we thought that he was going in for good news about a surgery that wouldn't have been any fun, but it would have been helpful. And um, they said it had spread to his liver and his lungs and he was terminal. And we asked how long and we found out. And um, we decided no more treatment because he was totally ravaged from the chemo and the radiation that had gone on three months. And we knew that he was going to pass. Well, I met him at 18. If any of you have read Aging Powerfully, the book is not about my memoir, but it has some memoir in it. I met him at 18 after some really rocky years. Uh, I married him at 19 and we were married 40 years when this happened. And um, he lived for another seven months, hospice at the house, and then he passed. Well, one of the things hospice offered, besides the peace, I'm going to say it this way, the peace of mind of fighting something that there was no solution for, it, it was ravishing and um, ravaging, ravaging, not ravishing, good grief. And I, um, I was terrified uh, because I was very, I was young and very vulnerable and broken when I met him. He was four years older, had just come back from tour of duty in, in Vietnam uh, as a Marine, had been wounded. He had seen a lot of life. And so he was quite a mature guy. And he took excellent care of me to the degree. And I, I built a very successful business with him uh, that exceeded our expectations because I used my skills that I evolved to understand. Uh, and he took care of everything else. And he even worried. He said to me, you need to marry again because he was afraid that I wouldn't be able to do it. I'd never even balanced a checkbook. Don't I sound pitiful? But it was true. And they offered the cognitive behavioral therapy to hospice uh, patients as well as their spouses. And I and he helped me change by looking at these negative thoughts and thinking about possibilities, tapping into past experiences that proved those thoughts to be, if not an exaggeration or if not unproven, just showed that there were other alternatives to that because that's that's what it is too. And then after he passed, when I had no idea how I was going to make it in life because I thought I couldn't, 
uh, the therapy was very, very helpful to the degree that within a couple of weeks after he passed and I went to India to stay with my son uh, for a while, they were having their baby and I was there when the baby was born. He had, uh, was working in India at the time. Um, once I was with them long enough to help them, I took off to parts unknown. I went to Turkey and Morocco and China and, and um, I went to 15 countries in 15 months after my husband passed on my own, you know, with groups, uh, but on my own in the group without needing anybody to have to have dinner with me or lunch with me because I was that independent because I learned to be by deciding that everything that scared me, at least in that way in my life, I could handle. And man, I found out I could handle just about anything. So that's my story that takes me a long way in most things, not in technology until now. So relate this to something of yours, relate it to whatever it is that might be holding you back because here's my Rocky dance. Da, 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 da. <laughs> this sounds so minuscule in as it relates to the valuable things to be excited about in life. But for me, this is I've, I've conquered something and I feel really good about it. And then there'll be something else that I'll decide to conquer and something else and something else. And you can do the same thing. That is all I have to say. I hope you're having a great day because I know I am. If you want to read something interesting, Aging Powerfully has a memoir, but more importantly, it has an acronym of 10 words. That's what Powerfully is. 10 words that relate to lifestyle modalities, things that can help us, well, in some cases, age backwards. I wrote it three years ago. I'm 73, and I feel like I'm aging backwards to a degree because of the precepts of lifestyle as medicine and how it can feed our body, which then feeds our mind, which then stabilizes our system. Okay, that's all. <laughs> Have a great day. I know I'm going to. I'm going to get back and talk to my great group and uh, hope to see you again soon. All right. Bye-bye.